so I've put our electric trim and tilt on a 15 now, and now I think it's time to put it on a 25, 30 horsepower, well this is a Tahatsu. Um, I know it says Mariner, they also put a Mercury sticker on these, but they're built um, by Tahatsu in Japan. But anyway, I've got my hands on a um, Honda 30. Um, this motor is actually a four stroke, but it's yeah, stuffed inside. But the trim and tilt on this is actually a really good unit. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take this clamp bracket and put it on this guy. Um, and as you can see at the moment, this one has a broken standard um, clamp bracket. I do have another standard one, but I think trim and tilt is gonna be much better. So, okay, so I've got this uh, clamp bracket off, got it wired up. There's a uh, little solenoid thing here. Um, so we will go up, and this actually has a single ram, but it's um, two stage ram inside. So we'll, that's down. So you can see it'll, that's trim and that's tilt. You can see the change. And I'll go down and you'll hear the change again when it hits the trim. So that's the tilt portion of the ram. And that's the trim. So pretty stoked it's a two stage ram. That'll be awesome. So there's the two clamp brackets. This one's the Tahatsu 2530 horsepower. And this one's the Honda with the trim unit in it. Um, there is a, a decent difference in them, in size. Um, so yes, I will weigh them and see the difference in that anyway. We'll do the Tahatsu one first. All right. Try not to get it too greasy. That's only five kilograms. Here is the Honda one. Okay, we have 13 kilograms. There you go. So it's only eight kilograms heavier for trim and tilt. That's not bad. All right, so I've removed the broken swivel bracket pivot tube Thing off the uh, 2530 Tahatsu, and I'm going to do what I did last time and um, yeah, cut all of the ribs and stuff off this just to leave the tube, and then hopefully, um, yeah, make it fit inside this one and weld the top and weld the bottom. All right, nine inch was the way to go, so I basically just cut, cut the sides off this, um, just giving it a a rough shape. So, plan is again, this pivot tube will, once I've finished machining it, will slide down in there nicely through here and then push into, push into that top there. Um, so, yeah, that fits, fits really, really well. Um, I'll v, put a V groove around here and weld the two together so it'll become one thing. And I will re tap um, the thr friction bolt, steering friction bolt through. Um, so the original factory bushings and stuff for the 25 30 horsepower Tahatsu can go back into this. Um, and yeah, it'll be perfect. I've made a shim for the bottom of this tube so that it fills in the gap between the Honda bush and, and the base of this um, so that there's yeah gonna be no play and, and stuff between the two. So yeah, that, that's gonna slide up in between the two there. I'll hammer that in before I weld it. And then I'll, again, I'll weld the base of this, the three things together and um, sand it flat. Um, I'll reinstate this grease nipple. Uh, All right, so I'm about to TIG weld in this um, Insert.
Right, so this thing's actually ready to put on the motor now. Um, I've tapped in the steering friction, um, the original bolt, original spring, tension spring. Um, I made these two um, pieces of solid, I think they're 12 mil um, aluminium. Um, they are motor stops for um, how far the steering on the motor can go. Um, on the original bracket, um, yeah, there's these two stops. So that just sort of allows the motor to only go to a certain point when you're steering. Um, I think otherwise the trunk would probably hit these and you'd, you'd end up putting dents in your scratching your trunk or whatnot. Um, reason why I've tapped these instead of welding them is I didn't really want to weld across here and across here. Um, yeah, or, or around here um, too much. I don't want to change the integrity of that piece there. Here's a spare divot tube. Still gotta put the bushes in that, but um, yeah, so as you can see, stops there and stops there. So we've got the, yeah, steering stops in, which is good. So now I've just got to mount it on this guy and uh, trim and tilt. Awesome. All right, well, this is just about ready to put the uh, tilt trim unit onto this motor. Um, so I've got my uh, top washer there. Okay, so I've got the original factory bush inside here. I'll put the bottom ones on from the base. Then we've got a rubber seal. And that all goes up inside there. And then we've got a support washer. Woo! Awesome. Yeah, so pretty much, yeah, put the circlip on there. Um, refix these mount bolts and wire it up and that's it. Sorted. Awesome. Pretty cool. It's gonna take a bit of grease. Coming out, coming out all around the bottom and up around here. So I just really wanted to squirt heaps in there. It's starting to smush out down here. So yeah, that whole pivot tube is now full of grease. So I've pretty much finished this motor now. Um, yeah, sprayed the cover, two-pack paint, um, new stickers, repaired the skeg, little part here was missing, um, sprayed the gear case in two-pack, and also the clamp brackets all sprayed up now in two-pack. Um, the only thing I've got left to do is mount this little trim switch. I'd love that up in the end of a, a tiller. Um, I'm considering making a new tiller for it a bit longer and I want this trim switch up in the end. Um, so, still a little bit of air in the system because I've had the motor on its side and stuff. But that'll all work itself out. So that's right down there. Trim, tilt, pretty cool, very happy.